have moments of real terror when I think we may be losing this generation. We have got to bring these young people into the active life of the community and make them feel that they are necessary. Eleanor Roosevelt. In the first month of his new administration, President Franklin D. Roosevelt established the Civilian Conservation Corps. The first New Deal relief agency had two goals, to relieve the massive unemployment among the nation's young men and to save its long-neglected and deteriorating natural environment. By July 1933, 275,000 young men were enrolled in more than 1,300 CCC camps spread across the United States. You must suffer the experience of tramping hot, smelly pavements day after day, with the perpetual answer dinning in your ears until it becomes a satanic chorus of no, no, no. Your head spins like a top and all the world becomes nothing but a whirling kaleidoscope of faces, places, streets, buildings, and some good Samaritan has you thrown into the local jail for drunkenness and vagrancy. The typical enrollee was between 18 and 19 years old from a family with six children and an unemployed father. CCC enrollees received two sets of clothing, a blue denim work suit and a U.S. Army uniform for dressy occasions. For a minimum of six months, CCCers followed a daily routine in the camps, which were run by the War Department. Reveille at 6 a.m., washed and dressed by 6.30, calisthenics, then a hearty breakfast, and then off to work by 7.45. Planting trees, building roads, bridges, trails, phone lines, fire towers, restoring national historical sites and monuments, helping to fight fires and curb floods. CCCers created more than half the forests planted in the history of the country. By 1938, they had planted more than 200 million trees. I live in a little town which is smoky all the time, and there is no fresh air whatsoever like there is on the mountains. Good, fresh air and good eats, better than what over half the fellows are getting at home. For many, the steady supply of food, regular hours, and vigorous labor paid off. During his stay in the camps, the average CCCer gained 8 to 14 pounds and half an inch in height. And then there was the $30 a month each CCCer earned. Not a huge sum, but amidst the hardship of the Depression, $25 of it automatically went back to help their needy families. I just received a letter from my mother, who is proud of me for what I am able to do for her with the money that I am sending home. Her health has been poor for some time, and I am helping to pay the necessary bills. This is in itself a great satisfaction to me. Why did I ever join the CCC? The CCC. Why did I join the CCC? The CCC. Why did I join the CCC? This old hard labor's killing me. But the open air and military supervision didn't suit everyone. I've been in jail twice, three years in a reformatory, and I lived three months at the Salvation Army shelter in Chicago. But that army chain gang was worse than any. They treat me like a dirty dog, a dirty dog. I have to slay down in a log, in a log. And they feed, they feed me like a hog. Oh, why did I join the CCC? The, CCC? the work was hard and the days long. But after hours and on weekends, CCCers were on their own as long as they stayed on the campgrounds. At the wreck, we have a radio, a piano, a store called a canteen. There's a little library with a variety of books and magazines. All sports are encouraged. We have a baseball team, a boxing squad, etc. An orchestra has been formed in classes in various arts and crafts. Performances and dances were very popular in no small part because they were opportunities to invite young women from neighboring communities to the camps. 
sometimes to the consternation of local authorities. I have to work most every day, most every day. Five bucks a month is my pay, my only pay. I'm just a wasting my life away. Oh, why did I join the CCC? Education turned out to be a significant CCC achievement. Within the first three years of the program, 35,000 enrollees learned to read and write, and many earned high school diplomas and, in a few cases, college degrees. Norfolk Journal and Guide, January 1934. Young Eddie Simmons, a Harlem youth, was dishonorably discharged at Camp No. 5 in New Jersey when he refused to stand and fan flies from a white officer. Simmons told the officer he did not think fanning flies was part of his duty. The officer thereupon dishonorably discharged the lad and denied him his last month's pay, although admitting that Simmons' record was good. The act creating the CCC expressly forbade discrimination, and some 200,000 African-American men enrolled. But the CCC accepted them on a quota system instead of by need alone, and segregated African-Americans from white enrollees. White commanders ran the segregated camps, which were located only near communities that didn't object to their presence. The CCC sent Native American youth to camps on reservation land. On the whole, I was gratified rather than disappointed with the CCC. I had expected the worst. Of course, it reflects to some extent all the practices and prejudices of the U.S. Army. But as a job and an experience for a man who has no work, I can heartily recommend it. The CCC ended in 1942. By its close, more than three million young men had served in the ranks of soil soldiers. I still have not attained my goal, but I am making my own way, and that is sufficient for the present. What is probably more important is the fact that I am not the undernourished, scared kid that went into Fort Knox over five years ago. Instead, my eyes are clear and my mind is receptive to whatever the future has in store.